Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Kaiser, and thank you for inviting me here today. Um, um, yes, yeah, so I've, I've had the good, really the good fortune uh, the last few months to work on a new initiative um, that aims to optimize the environment for clinical trials in Europe. Um, it's called Accelerating Clinical Trials in the EU, ACT EU. Um, and I think before we move on, we should uh, note the three logos in, in the top right corner, um, because what we see, we see the European Commission, uh, we see, of course, the EMA, and, but also the heads of medicines agencies. And this is really important because this is the first time that all like, three organizations have come together with the explicit goal to transform clinical trials in Europe. So there's a strong political mandate here for change. Um, so next slide, please. So before we get to ACT EU, uh, we need to talk a little bit about where we are now. And this is in fact part of our problem statement. So next slide. So before 2004, there were only uh, nation specific rules on clinical trials. Um, there was no harmonization. Um, uh, so different rules and processes were in every member state and this would cause delays in setting up and running trials. So the clinical uh, trials directive um, was introduced in 2001 by, by the commission and really set requirements for the, the conduct of clinical trials. And while it really was introduced to, to harmonize and, and simplify, um, it was in fact uh, criticized by, by academia and, and industry for, for raising costs, but also placing uh, uh, other regulatory burdens. And the commission then in response to these criticisms actually uh, performed a study um, and um, a study on the impact of the of the directive, and it, they found a 25% uh, decline in the number of clinical trials that were conducted in the EU as a direct result of the directive. And additionally, the directive also failed to provide the processes for the approval of multinational trials. So addressing this in 2014, the directive was replaced with a regulation which aimed to reduce these specific shortcomings. And now it's a, it's a good time to talk about it because uh, it just entered into, uh, into application at the end of January and the clinical trial regulation uh, harmonizes the registration, assessment and supervision for clinical trials uh, throughout the EU via the clinical trials information system, which serves as the single EU portal for registering clinical trials in Europe. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> this is a bit of the problem statement. Um, that we need to do more to improve the initiation and conduct of clinical trials. Because on the left, we see that 40% of, of all clinical trials um, in the EU uh, are conducted by non-commercial sponsors, um, so such as like academia. So these types of trials often will drive innovation in areas such as unmet needs and rare diseases. But on the right, um, we, we see, um, you know, we see bar charts uh, for how many um, member states on average are involved in every uh, trial. For commercial sponsors, trials on average involve about three member states. But we see that non-commercial clinical trials really are predominantly mononational. And if you think about that number, it's concretely, if, if I ran five non-commercial trials, I would expect only one of them to involve another member state. So in, in addition, many of these trials are also um, often small and then therefore like underpowered. So if we had fewer but larger trials that were run multinationally, um, these would generate more useful information for regulatory and healthcare decision-making. And it's perhaps also the biggest lesson learned from COVID. Can we please have bigger clinical trials? Next slide. So another uh, problem statement slide, uh, we see a graph. Uh, with three lines. The blue, uh, blue represents the EEA, um, the green North America, and yellow is the rest of the world. And this is from data uh, from marketing dossiers that reach the EMA. Um, and so these lines show us where on the planet clinical trials are, are being run. And, and what it shows is that over the last five years, there's been a steady declining fraction um, in data coming from EEA participants. If you look well in, 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 in 2015, uh, we still that see that around 40% of all the trials were um, be, being conducted here. But in 2020, only 19% of trials were. Next slide, please. 
So the previous slide suggests that either trials are being done outside Europe because the climate there is better, or there are factors that are dissuading sponsors from starting big, impactful clinical trials here. So it, it, it's likely a bit of both. Uh, so therefore, of course, the introduction of the clinical trials regulation, but now also act EU, which I'll get to in a moment, but sure. But first, the clinical trials regulation. So the clinical trials regulation, you can see, is having uh, th three pillars. Um, first of all, it brings harmonized clinical trial processes, collaborative assessment, reduced administrative burden, um, and by doing so, should enable multinational clinical trials. And there's also been a significant increase in transparency of clinical trials data, and this will hopefully empower patients and healthcare professionals to find a trial to participate in. And for clinical trial safety, uh, there's been a huge change where no longer clinical trials are monitored on a per trial basis, but instead it is the active substance that is now being monitored throughout Europe for all clinical trials. And this is only made possible by very, very close collaboration between the member states. Next slide, please. So the clinical trials information system or CTIS um, is really the IT system that is the backbone of the clinical trials regulation. Um, the system really does everything in terms of the process of the clinical trial, um, harmonizing submission, assessment, and supervision of clinical trials in the EU. Um, benefits for public health, um, facilitating most national trials uh, to address key health issues. Um, it will support research and innovation by making the data publicly available. And hopefully this will solidify our position as a globally attractive hub for clinical research. But having said all that, we do not uh, believe the clinical trials regulation and CTIS are enough to make this happen. Next slide, please. So an initiative um, was recently established called Accelerating Clinical Trials in the EU. So ACT-EU is an initiative to transform the EU clinical research environment in support of medical innovation and better patient outcomes. Um, so this really um, uh, builds on the momentum of the, the CTR and CTIS to strengthen the environment for clinical trials. And the regulatory network strategy and the Commission's pharmaceutical strategy both include recommendations to foster innovation through clinical trials. So ACTIU really aims to deliver on these recommendations. The initiative was, initiative was launched on the 13th of January, or two weeks before the, the, the entering into application of the clinical trial regulation. And like I said at the beginning, it's importantly being led by the Commission, the heads of medicines agencies, and the EMA. It's, it's truly a co-led initiative. Um, and the presentation that you see here also has like a, a, a two little uh, 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 words with a line under them. If you, if you have the presentation, you can click on it and it will link you to the press release and the paper. Next slide, please. Um, so, so these are really objectives that I will go through quickly because um, the actions I think that follow from these are um, a lot more informative. Um, so first is to support the conduct of large multinational trials with specific support for uh, SMEs and academia um, and also support for trials which address unmet needs, rare diseases, and also for public health crises. So really supporting trials for innovative treatments. Uh, secondly, is to facilitate coordinated scientific advice to support trial and marketing authorization. And three, to ensure a unified European approach to clinical trials at the global level. So that is to speak with one voice and to engage all stakeholders to deliver inclusive patient-oriented medicines development across populations. Next slide, please. So this is really at the core of, of ACT-EU, uh, the priority actions which, were, which follow from the objectives I just read out. Um, these are the priority actions for 22, 23. And I know this, this is, a, is a lot of text, um, but to understand ACT-EU, um, I think we should take a little bit of time just to go through them one by one. So in the top left, um, we have the governance and uh, we, so also to say we have these 10 priority actions and we try to group them into to four uh, domains or clusters, if you will, um, of related actions. So in the top left, we have something uh, grouping called governance and integration, um, which says 
to develop a governance rationalization strategy aligning different expert groups and working parties. And the, because there, there are many um, different bodies within the regulatory network um, you know, yeah, with a, you know, different slices of uh, responsibility on clinical trials. And uh, actually, you really aim to rationalize and, if possible, consolidate all these groups. Um, seven, reinforce the coordination between scientific advice on clinical trial approval and clinical trial design. And this addresses a really uh, difficult topic um, because while the, the EMA might, might give advice on, on clinical trials, um, sometimes such advice uh, can be challenged um, uh, at, on the national level through the clinical trial approval process. And this is because the approval of a clinical trial um, re really remains a member state competency. So we hope to address this, this difficulty head on um, so that member state approval of clinical trials um, and advice given by the agency is more closely aligned. Um, I think an example of this, um, maybe the problem of this in action was, was COVID-19, which showed that there was a relative absence of EU impactful multi-state trials. And this might in part have to do with the relatively slow trial authorization. Um, and of course, the slower trial authorizes, the, the, the harder it is for research to, to uh, respond in a, in a timely manner. Um, and then a uh, nine um, is establishing a clinical trial safety monitoring and bridging to the EU for health joint action. So the goal will he'll be, uh, here be to um, uh, really further development, uh, the further development of safety monitoring um, as originally established by the clinical trials regulation. Um, but now with additional support from the commission and member states will work very closely together with specifically the goal to teach each other uh, the necessary skills and best practices to do this, this type of clinical trial safety monitoring. So in the, in the bottom left, and um, my, the, two, the two colleagues here today are certainly a lot better place to say something about the, the, the following two. Um, and this is really at the core of, of ACTU. Um, so first is implementing the, the GCP modernization informed by um, the development of guidance at ICH. So this is not just about adopting guidelines, but really properly implementing those guidelines on the topics of modern GCP approaches. Um, some of these um, were, were accelerated by, um, um, by, by COVID, uh, such as decentralized trials. Uh, and the idea is, um, because a lot of this work was already ongoing, but the idea is now within ACTU is to bring it together with other related activities under the ACTU umbrella and especially in the context of this next action, which is on methodology. Um, so the next action, develop and publish key methodologies guidance uh, on, for instance, AI uh, and machine learning impacted clinical trials, uh, complex trials. Um, this will do what it says on the tin. And, and, and the hope is that these two uh, actions together um, as the core of ACTU will lead to a, a change and modernization in how clinical trials are designed, uh, conducted, and inspected. So then in the top right, uh, we have uh, an, an engagement, the, the, the rather the how will we make this happen? So uh, first of all, um, is to establish a multi-stakeholder platform, including patients after stakeholder analysis. And, on this topic, um, we intend to have workshops under the ACTU umbrella in, in, in 22, um, which will inform the establishment of this platform. And the idea is here that there needs to be a place where every stakeholder can meaningfully engage and that this forum will serve um, to, to modernize and transform uh, clinical trials. And six will be to plan and launch a targeted communication campaign to engage everyone involved in clinical research. Um, and action 10 is to develop a training curriculum on, on clinical trials and link up with academia and SMEs. And this will mostly, at least initially, be targeted at regulators, um, but because the, the, the objective of ACTU is, is quite broad, it might also more, um, be more than just about the, 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 the regulatory part. Um, so, and then the bottom right is the, the, the impact, and um, impact is really about uh, how do we make sure the, the effort that we expend actually delivers better clinical trials for better public health. And um, so 
The, the first of these, the successful and timely implementation of the clinical trials regulation and its implementing acts. And, and this really contains two sub actions. The, the first is to develop KPIs to track the European uh, trial environment. You know, can we track how uh, rather you know, map what the, the environment is like, is like now, how the environment changes over time? And the second sub action is at, really at the core of the clinical trial regulation to promote larger and multinational trials, especially in academia, which as those plots, which I showed at, um, at the start of the presentation, um, you know, still have a long way to go. Um, and then the, the, the final action um, is to analyze data. Um, yeah, and this is a little bit of a dense, a dense action. Um, analyze data about clinical trials, leveraging academic, nonprofit, European and international initiatives, improving the impact of policymaking and funding to support evidence-based decision-making. So what does that mean? So um, these data that we talk about, the, uh, the data about clinical trials um, come from clinical trial applications, say from CTIS, but also historically from a database called UDRACT, which was set up in the context of the clinical trials directive, um, but also clinical trials data from marketing dossiers. Can we use these um, to improve the impact of policymaking? And you can imagine this as more than just a metric, right? But really, can we use this data with modern data techniques to shine light on topics that we can use to support regulatory decision making? And an obvious question would, would just be to ask, what are the properties of a successful trial compared to an unsuccessful one? Are there any early signs that are maybe actionable from the sides of a regulator? And these kinds of types of insights could be used to inform scientific advice, but also importantly, um, to support the ex uh, effective use of funding mechanisms uh, for public health. Next slide, please. And then just briefly, um, a few other initiatives that are currently strengthening the climate for clinical trials in Europe. Um, the mandate of the EMA Emergency Task Force, uh, which was set up in response uh, to COVID, has recently been, been given a more permanent footing, um, which will increase our preparedness for the next health crisis. Uh, and there are also two initiatives funded by the, the commission. Uh, one supports safety monitoring of clinical trials and another which accelerates the assessment of, uh, of COVID clinical trials. Uh, next slide, please. So, so finally, um, what does this mean uh, for this working party? Um, well, the, for this working party, the clinical trials regulation, CTIS, and ACT-EU will support bigger and better clinical trials. It will drive innovation in the clinical trial methods. It will generate data about clinical trials to better understand and address health needs and um, provide an opportunity to engage through the multi-stakeholder platform. And just to stress that last bullet point, um, really the multi-stakeholder platform is an absolutely principal uh, deliverable that really will enable all the others. And um, so we will therefore, um, in due course of the year, we will be reaching out to this working party uh, really as a key partners in, uh, in its establishment. So with that, uh, thank you for your time and my colleagues and I will be happy to take uh, any questions.